Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. And in this video, we want to discuss the factors affecting the intermolecular forces between nonpolar molecules. Now, the intermolecular attraction between nonpolar molecules go by a few different names, but effectively, they are the same thing. Some of us will see this as instantaneous dipole induced dipole interaction. Some of us will learn this as temporary dipole induced dipole interaction. Different names for the same type of attraction that we encounter will include dispersion forces and van der Waals forces. So for this discussion, we will be using instantaneous dipole induced dipole attraction to quantify the intermolecular interaction between nonpolar molecules. And I'll use IDID attraction for a short form notation. Now the IDID attraction is affected by two things. The first factor that affects instantaneous dipole induced dipole interaction will be the size of the electron cloud. The second factor will be the surface area for molecular interaction. Now take note, when there are two factors, we need to know which factor is more important or which factor is dominant. Electron cloud size is more important. So therefore, if you're comparing the IDID attraction between two nonpolar molecules, the first thing we should be looking at will be the size of the electron cloud. When there's a difference in the electron cloud size, the focus will be on that. And we'll use this to govern the strength of IDID attraction. If the size is the same, then we would look at the surface area for molecular interaction. So let us run through each of these factors part by part. The first one will be the size of the electron cloud. Now in general, the bigger the electron cloud size, the more polarizable it will be and the stronger the IDID between molecules. Now what do we mean by bigger electron cloud size? So therefore it is more polarizable. In this case, we have two electron cloud. The left hand side one, obviously it is a smaller electron cloud. The right hand side one you have a bigger electron cloud. So for example, let's say that I have two electrons inside this electron cloud and I have six electrons in this bigger electron cloud. Now if we treat electrons as particles in this discussion, then for nonpolar molecules, the electrons should be evenly distributed throughout the electron cloud. But because the electrons are in constant random motion, it is possible at a particular instance, we'll have more electrons on one side of the electron cloud and less electrons on the other side of the electron cloud, which results in an instantaneous dipole or a temporary dipole. So let's say for example, if I have this electron cloud with two electrons, at one particular instance, it is possible that both of these electrons are all leaning on the right hand side. So therefore, the electron distribution on both sides will now be different. I have more electrons on the right hand side. So the right hand side will be a partial minus charge. The left hand side will be a partial positive charge. Now this is what we call an instantaneous dipole or a temporary dipole because at that particular instance, more electrons are on one side than on the other side. So at this instance, this is a temporary dipole. Of course, when the electrons move away, on average, the electrons will be evenly distributed. So overall, this molecule is still non-polar, but this is what we call an instantaneous dipole. And the attraction between this instantaneous dipole and another instantaneous dipole is what we call the IDID interaction. Now, how about this bigger electron cloud? If I have this bigger electron cloud with six electrons, then again, in terms of the distribution of the electrons, on average, you will be spread out very well. So it is non-polar, but at one particular instance, it is possible that all these six electrons will be gathered on one side of the electron cloud. And what happens will be there is an uneven charge distribution. And because all these electrons are on the right hand side, this again will be a partial minus charge. The one on the other end will be a partial positive charge. And because I have more electrons inside this electron cloud, so therefore it is possible for me to form a stronger dipole as compared to the molecule with a smaller electron cloud. So I have six electrons on this side, I will get a bigger delta minus, and on the other side, I'll have a bigger delta plus. So this is again, another instantaneous dipole or temporary dipole. And you notice the strength of this dipole will be stronger than this dipole because this is a bigger delta minus versus a bigger delta plus, while this is a smaller delta minus versus a smaller delta plus. So this is what we mean by when you have a bigger electron cloud, you'll be more polarizable. So if it is more polarizable, you'll get a stronger dipole. Therefore, the strength of the instantaneous dipole induced dipole interaction will be stronger. 
because you have a stronger dipole attracting another stronger dipole. So the strength of IDID attraction will be stronger for the electron cloud size, which is larger. Now the second factor will be the surface area for molecular interaction. Now remember, surface area only comes in when we are comparing two molecules with the same electron cloud size or the same number of electrons. In general, if the molecule is more spherical, then the surface area will be smaller. So therefore, you will have less interaction with a neighbor. The IDID attraction will be weaker. So we have these two examples here with different shapes. The one on the left-hand side is long and flat. So therefore, the surface area is larger. While this molecule is spherical, so therefore it has a smaller surface area. Now let's try to surround these two molecules with their neighbors and we see the surface area for molecular interaction for these two different shapes. Alright, so once you notice we put in the neighbors, then it is quite easy for us to see the surface area for molecular interaction. So if the molecule is long and flat, you notice there is a lot of surface area that this molecule can interact with another neighbor. And at the bottom here, it is the same thing. It can interact with this molecule at the bottom. A large part of this molecule is interacting or touching a neighbor. So therefore, you have a bigger surface area for interaction with a neighbor. The IDID attraction tends to be stronger. Whereas if I look at the spherical molecule, you notice by virtue of its shape, the interaction with a neighbor is very minimal. You just touch this neighbor by a tiny bit touch another neighbor by a tiny bit, touch all these different neighbors by a tiny amount. So the interaction with a neighbor will be much, much less. So therefore, the idea the attraction between these molecules will be weaker. All right, so that was the discussion involving the factors affecting the strength of instantaneous dipole induced dipole attraction between non-polar molecules. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.